So what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Robert. If this is your first time tuning in. So today I'm going to attempt to answer a question that I received and that was, is owning land expensive? Now the question wasn't really specified. Um, so I'm going to kind of answer it to my best of my knowledge and to the best of my, um, I guess, guessing to where they were leading to that question. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and answer it. Again, if you like this types of content, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, share on this video. Again, my name is Robert. Let's go ahead and get into it. So is land, is owning land expensive? Well, it depends. What are you doing with the property? You know, are you living on the property? Are you hunting the property? Um, what are you doing with it? So I didn't really get any specifications on the question. So I'm going to kind of just do my best and kind of answer it. So is it expensive? Generally speaking, not necessarily as, as, as expensive as people might think it is. And that's because there are a lot of exemptions when it comes to like taxes and tax breaks for owning land. There's different types of wildlife exemptions. There are types of homestead exemptions. If you're living on the property, there are things available to you um, to reduce the cost, at least from the tax side of things um, for owning land. Now, um, I guess where it can get expensive is the cost to purchase the land initially yeah it's expensive because um specifically raw land at least raw land is going to require a larger down payment than a traditional city lot with a house on there if you're buying raw land yeah it's going to cost you more than you would for buying a house in the city for an upfront cost um, and the reason is because banks will require, if you're going to be taking a loan out, of course, if you're going to be spider web, if you're going to be taking a loan out on the property, the bank is going to want to see anywhere between 20 to 35% down on this. And again, the reason the bank is going to want to see more money down on raw land is because they are taking a larger gamble a larger risk by lending you the money on something that has no uh no home on the property um, it's easier to default on something if it's not your primary residence if you're not living on the property um, people will more than likely default on a piece of property piece of land that they have versus a house that's that houses their family their kids and themselves um, if the people have, if someone has two properties, one has a house, the other one does not have the house, you know, which one are you going to um, lose in the event you had to let one go? So that's how the bank sees it. So that's why the bank does ask for larger down payments when people go out and try to buy land. It reduces their risk and you have more skin in the game. So the bank feels more comfortable um, because they have more equity in the event they have to foreclose on your on your land they have more equity and there's a higher chance that they can get their money back from you or money back from the investment <clears throat> um the next thing just you know everyday cost on land it's land it doesn't really require a whole lot but again what are you going to do with the land are you, do you have cattle on the property do you have horses goats to so what are you doing with it if you have if you have livestock on there and that's all you have you're not actually living on there but you just have run cattle out there yeah you can have a little bit of cost associated with having the land you're gonna have hay water if you don't have water available you're gonna have to bring water out there um, fence maintenance things like that so yeah it can get expensive if you um, if you do have livestock up there out there now you know take it to the other side of this if you just have the land and it's just sitting there and you just bought it as an investment to potentially sell it down the road or you just go out there and barbecue on the weekends whatever you know yeah your your costs aren't going to be that high um other than your taxes maybe some insurance that's probably about it you don't really have necessarily a fence maintenance um, because you're not really running any cattle 
usually the other owner typically is going to be the one taking care of the of the fence line because he doesn't want his cattle getting out onto the road so yeah i mean there's not a whole lot of cost associated there now we'll go to the other side of this and that's you having land and a house and living there yeah that can get expensive because now you're living there now you know maybe you don't want the cattle from your neighbor's property going over there so maybe you take care of the fence line um because the, the cows keep knocking down the fence line so yeah there's gonna be some cost maybe um maybe you have some road maintenance cost because now you live there you have you have to access that property um yeah you're gonna have some maintenance costs there so it kind of just depends honestly like what are you what are you doing with the property it can get expensive if you um like i said if you're living on the property yeah it can get it can get expensive but everyday maintenance just on the land itself it's not really a whole lot but again like i said whatever you're going to do with the property is going to vary so i hope i'm kind of answering that question um again it was kind of a broad question um, you know, is land is it is only owning land expensive? Like I said, most of your most of your cost is going to come from the upfront cost. Um, but other than that, not really. At least in my experience, I guess you could say, it hasn't been too crazy expensive. It's only been expensive because I want to make it expensive or I plan on doing something um, like throwing a road, yeah, a, or a trail, yeah. If you want to do that and you have the land it's going to be expensive but um if i didn't want to do this i could cut the cost there if i didn't want to do an actual road um with the base material you know that's thousands of dollars there didn't have to be made could it but obviously makes the property look nicer makes it more accessible so yeah it gets a little expensive if you look at it that way but again you can have a dirt road and if you don't mind um having ruts in the soil or ruts in the ground it doesn't have to be expensive you can just you know uh, hang out there and run through it and not worry about all those dips and bumps but again it's just is it, it i guess the best way to put it is it gets as as expensive as you make it that's the best way i can put it if you want something that's a little bit nicer a little bit more comfortable a little bit more accessible and uh more convenient yeah it can get expensive if you want something that's just raw you just don't really care about making it so convenient you just want to keep it as natural as possible then no it, it can be really 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 inexpensive and going back to the taxes there are a lot of tax breaks or a lot of options for landowners to reduce their their tax burden so again it doesn't have to be expensive from that side of things from the taxes because there are ways to reduce your taxes um i hope that kind of answers the question um again if i had been given like a little bit more direction i could dive a little bit more into it but um yeah i mean i hope it answers the question best as possible and yeah appreciate you guys watching um, until next time, be careful, be good, take care, and God bless. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.